Okay, good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, today, my name is John Coonrod. I'm with Rogers Corporation. And I'm going to be talking about PCB, printed circuit board fabrication influences regarding microwave uh, influences, microwave electrical influences, of course. And actually, I'm going to look at uh, just a few of the variables. There's a, this is one of those topics that's huge. There's so many different things you could consider. Really, what I'm going to be looking at is mostly some of the more common effects like uh, solder mask and ENEG. And uh, I'm going to give data on that, but more than anything else, I want to give kind of the thought process. And besides the data that I'm showing here, once you understand the thought process, when you run into a different scenario that's not like what I'm showing, it kind of helps you understand, you know, what's going on with the losses and why you're seeing what you're seeing. So to begin with, I'd like to give an overview of insertion loss in case people in the audience may not be as familiar with it. And also this type of overview with insertion loss is kind of a good way to think about what's really going on with the, uh, the circuit. Uh, insertion loss, as probably most of you know, is the total loss of a circuit in an RF sense. And insertion loss is actually made up of four different components, made up of uh, dielectric loss, conductor loss, radiation loss, and leakage. Uh, typically, the circuit uh, materials used in the high frequency industry, uh, they have very high volume resistivity. And because of that, they usually have uh, little issues with leakage losses, even though there are exceptions. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that today. I'm trying to keep this relatively simple. And then radiation losses is something that will not keep this conversation simple. So I'm not going to talk about that today either. I've got an entire presentation just on radiation losses. Uh, but also what we're going to be talking about today for design and uh, thicknesses and frequency should be in the range where radiation losses should be insignificant. And also as a very generalized comment, for microwave engineering and the microwave frequencies, generally conductor losses and dielectric losses make up the bulk of the problem. When you get in the millimeter wave range frequencies, that's when radiation loss really gets to be more problematic. There's exceptions, of course. Uh, so anyway, uh, the way I kind of like to talk about the insertion losses in a graphic sense. And uh, really what I'm going to do is look at uh, three different uh, charts here. The one in the middle has the legend. So let's go ahead and start with that one. And uh, this is using a 10 mil thick substrate. It's the Rogers 4350B substrate. It is a 50 ohm microstrip transmission line. And what I've done here is plotted the measured results for insertion loss from about 10 megahertz out to about 20 gigahertz. That's the thick purple line. Now, along with that, on that same chart are some other curves. And those are curves that generated from uh, free software on our website called MWI 2014. And what I like about that software is it gives me the ability to dissect the losses. So it tells me how much of the total loss or the insertion loss is made up of dielectric losses or conductor losses. So I get my model to where it matches pretty closely. The model total loss matches pretty closely to the measured loss of the circuits, which makes me think the model's within the range it should be for accuracy. And then I look at uh, how much of the dielectric loss and conductor loss is made up, uh, makes up that total insertion loss. And as you can see on the 10 mil thick circuit, uh, there's more conductor loss than there is dielectric losses. Now, the same thought process applied to a thinner circuit, same material, it's, uh, t the uh, 4350B again, except 6.6 .6 mil, now it's thinner, and you adjust the line width to maintain 50 ohms, more narrow conductor, and what you see is a pretty big shift in what's making up the total loss. The total loss now is really dominated by conductor loss. And the general trend is the thinner you go for circuits, the more the conductor loss dominates. And there's very few exceptions to that. And then if you want to go on the other end of the spectrum with this thickness dependency issue, you can look at a 30 mil thick circuit. And again, same material. You adjust the conductor width to maintain 50 ohms. And what you find here is a different scenario where the conductor losses are no longer the dominant factor. It's actually the dielectric losses that dominate. And the dielectric losses are mostly related to dissipation factor. So when a customer comes to us and says, I'm using your 6.6 4350B, and uh, I want to improve the losses, so I want to go to a different material with lower dissipation factor, we typically say you could do that, but it's not going to make much difference because that's related to dissipation factor. What you want to do is something that actually affects the conductor losses. So then you would probably want to look at a rough copper versus smooth copper, maybe use the 4350B low pro, which is much smoother. That will shift the conductor losses up, and along with that, the insertion losses will shift up as well. And on the flip side, if someone has 30 mil thick circuit and they're wanting to improve losses and they think about, hmm, smoother copper is better and they try to do that, they're not going to see the improvement because copper is not the dominant factor. On a thicker circuit, you really do want to go to a material with a lower dissipation factor because, again, dielectric losses dominates for a thicker circuit. So now let's talk about solder mask. 
Um, I'm basically done a study on two different types of circuits here. They're both using the 20 mil thick 4350B. They're both microstrip constructions. And uh, the chart on the left is for transmission lines. The one on the right is really screenshots of uh, microstrip edge couple bandpass filters that I've tested. And it is a comparison between bare copper and solder mask, circuits with solder mask. And on the transmission line circuits, it's tested from about uh, 10 megahertz up to about 20 gigahertz. And you can see that it's, uh, there is a frequency dependency. So if you have an application around 20 gigahertz and you're thinking whether to put solder mask on the application or not, well, at 20 gigahertz, you might want to think about that pretty carefully because there is a significant difference in, in losses due to the application of solder mask. However, if you're down around you know, 500 megahertz or 1 gigahertz or 2 gigahertz, well, if you look at that, there's not much losses, uh, differences between the solder mask and the bare copper circuit then. So maybe that's a, a valid thing to try. Uh, for reference, just for I'm going to talk about something in just a minute, about at 3 gigahertz, the difference between the circuit with the bare copper and the circuit with the solder mask, it's a difference of about 0.015 dB per inch. Now when you switch gears and you look at a different structure on the same material, this is an edge couple bandpass filter, and it's centered at 3 gigahertz. You see the difference between the loss of the circuit with copper versus the circuit with uh, solder mask is about a 0.2 dB difference. And this is loss, dB. If you do some conversions and make some assumptions and convert to dB per inch, at 3 gigahertz, this is about 0.05 dB per inch compared to the transmission line that was 0.015 dB per inch. So the coupled feature is much more sensitive to the solder mask. And it makes sense because these features are such that you have these conductors that are side by side and you have some uh, coupling effects between the fields. And when there's no solder mask, these coupling effects are using air, which is the lowest loss medium, of course. When you cover that up with solder mask, well, now these fields are using the solder mask and that's not such a low loss medium. So the edge coupled feature is actually affected more by the application of solder mask than the transmission lines or stubs, uh, features like that. So this is uh, another thing I wanted to talk about too, solder mask, uh, still looking at bare copper and solder mask. It's using a different material. This in, in, in this case is using the Rogers RO3003, which has a dissipation factor of 0.001, so it's a very low loss material. And here I'm looking at the effects of different thicknesses of circuits. And the reason I wanted to show this is because this is one of the few, I wouldn't really say exceptions, but anomaly to the original uh, slide that I talked about, thickness dependency and these different uh, losses. So if you look at this, the uh, 5 mil thick circuits, copper versus solder mask, is about a 0.053 dB per inch difference for the very thin circuit that's 5 mil thick substrate. Again, these are microstrip transmission lines. And then if you look at the same material but thicker using 20 mil thick substrate, the circuits of bare copper versus solder mask, there's a much less difference, about 0.027 dB per inch. Now what's interesting is you're thinking that a thin circuit should be dominated by conductor losses, and solder mask is not affecting conductor losses. Solder mask is affecting dielectric losses. So why is this circuit seeing such a big difference? And the reason why is a different reason, and it really has to do with thickness ratios. The solder mask is one mil thick, the substrate's five mils thick, and it's really that the solder mask is more of a ratio of the overall dielectric. That's what's really causing the issue there. Now, if you think of that same type of thickness ratio with the 20 mil thick, then it gets a little confusing because one mil solder mask on a 20 mil thick substrate, yeah, you shouldn't see much difference. But in reality, you really do. And that's when you go back to the idea a thicker circuit is more sensitive to dielectric losses. Putting solder mask on is adding to dielectric losses. So that's one of those, not exceptions, but just kind of an anomaly. And then if you look at how the circuit perceives dielectric constant, the way we measure that is using the microstrip differential phase length method. And essentially what we do is we measure a short circuit and a long circuit for phase, uh, calculate the effective dielectric constant, and then calculate the dielectric constant of the material as the circuit would perceive it. And there's different things that would make the circuit perceive a different dielectric constant, like copper roughness can actually make the circuit perceive a different dielectric constant than what the substrate is. Long story, not going to get into that right now. But using that measurement and looking at the thin circuits, 5 mil thick uh, laminate with uh, bare copper is the green curve, 5 mil thick laminate with the solder mask, that's the blue curve. You can see there's a pretty big difference there. DK difference about 0.3. Now if you look at the thicker circuits, the 20 mil thick 3003 materials, you can see there's again a pretty good size difference, about 0.15 difference. So the bottom line there is when you put solder mask on, it's not just a loss issue. It can be a dielectric constant issue. And of course, a lot of uh, the circuits have impedance matching and different things like that that are sensitive to these differences in constant. So that's something to keep in mind as well. 
Uh, next thing I want to talk about is ENIG. Uh, sometimes when I talk about ENIG, people think I'm bashing the finish, and I'm really not. ENIG's a good finish. It's used a lot, and it's got a lot of good purposes, uh, but it just has the natural thing that nickel is less conductive than copper. So when you put ENIG on a conductor, you are, in, you are increasing the conductor loss because really nickel is about one-third the conductivity of copper. So ENIG applied to a circuit, you're going to improve the, you're going to increase the conductor losses. Now, in the case of a thin circuit that is very sensitive to conductor losses, you're going to see more of an increase. A thicker circuit, you're going to see less of an increase. So again, looking at microstrip transmission lines, in this case using our Rogers RO4003C materials, I looked at a thicker transmission line, or a transmission line using thick materials and thin materials. The thicker materials are here, the blue curve and the red curve. Blue curve is the 20 mil thick substrate with bare copper. Red curve is the uh, same circuit with ENIG plating. And there you get a difference of about 0.21 dB per inch for loss. And this is out at uh, 25 gigahertz. And then uh, the other comparison is the same material but thinner material. Now it is 8 mil thick. And the difference between the bare copper green curve and I guess that's purple is about 0.3 dB per inch difference between bare copper and ENIG. So you can see that, yes, the thinner circuit is more affected by conductor losses, and ENIG does increase conductor losses. And it's nothing bad about ENIG. That's just the nature of nickel. Uh, and then there's also circuit design-specific issues. A microstrip transmission line, as you know, is a pretty simple structure. You have a signal on top, ground plane on the bottom. And some people ask sometimes, why is the losses increasing when you plate ENIG on a microstrip transmission line? Because really, you're just plating on the outside three edges of the conductor, and most of the fields are between the signal and the ground and they're not affected by the ENIG. And the main reason why is if you look at the signal conductor, there's some fields on the edges and there's actually very high current density on the edges and the ENIG is involved with that and that's how the microstrip transmission line is increasing losses. In the case of a coupled feature, like I've showed here, a grounded, coupled, a grounded coplanar waveguide, and this one happens to be tightly coupled, meaning that the space between the signal conductor in the middle and the adjacent ground planes, that space is very tight. And that means the electric fields on that plane are very uh, intense. And also the current density on the sidewalls of these conductors is also pretty high. So now this scenario is different than the microstrip. In this case, the fields are actually going through four layers of ENIG and the nickel influence on losses is going to be pretty significant. So the comparison and measurements that I've taken, again using uh, 4003C, in this case 8 mil 4003C, transmission lines again, the difference here between the microstrip uh, bare copper versus ENIGs, about 0.5 dB per inch, and that's out at 50 gigahertz, so that's a little higher frequency. And then the same type of testing using this type of structure, a grounded coplanar waveguide that's tightly coupled, out to 50 gigahertz. The difference between bare copper and ENIG is much more, about 1.2 dB per inch. So the circuit structure itself does make a difference, and if it's coupled, that's even more of a difference. So I buzzed through that pretty quick, and I've got just a couple of minutes for questions if anyone has any. Yes, sir. Yep, I sure have. Actually, I'm in the middle of a big study right now where I'm looking at Mersion 10, Mersion Silver, um, gosh, uh, Any Pig, Enig, a bunch of different things, different materials, different thicknesses. Long story made short, Immersion Silver looks just about like copper in insertion loss. There's just the difference is in the measurement noise, as far as I can tell. Very, very little difference. Yes, sir. I'm, could you use the microphone? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I was wondering if you tried experimenting with the conductor thickness as well as the dielectric thickness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I presented that. something yesterday on something similar to that, and that's the influence of copper plating thickness. And uh, in the fabrication process, there is a normal tolerance for a copper plating thickness. And in the case of microstrip, I see little differences of uh, thicker copper having lower effective dielectric constant and maybe a touch less loss, but uh, if it's there, it's not much. And the impedance goes up a little bit, too. But on the ground coplanar waveguide, there really is a significant difference, and that's because the sidewalls between the signal conductor and the ground conductor are taller with thick copper and shorter with thin copper. So yeah, I've got a study on that. It's, it's actually in the micro apps uh, from yesterday, if that helps. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Have you ever seen any impact from silkscreen? 
that small area of the trace? Oh, that's a fun one actually because uh, you know it's wave wavelength related. And I recently did a, a thermal imaging study, and it might sound like I'm off topic, but I'll come back in a second. I did a thermal imaging study where I need to have a band of uh, something with the right color or emissiv emissivity to get an accurate measurement. And if I cover up the whole circuit, it affects insertion loss of the whole circuit and it messes up my measurement. So I just wanted to look at a band. And what I found is there's a, uh, the band is related to wavelength. And if you're operating at 10 gigahertz, that band can be a certain wavelength, certain, if it's one tenth of the wavelength or less, it doesn't have an effect. Uh, if it's around quarter wavelength or more, it's gonna have an effect. So I think of the nomenclature or screening on things like that, as long as it's less than one-tenth of a wavelength on the conductor at the highest frequency you're worried about, it's probably okay. You won't see it. That's it. Oh, I guess I'm out of time. Thanks. Have a good day.